Hello scrappers. Well it's time for another tear down, scrap out, depopulate video. And uh, up on the autopsy table today we've got an HP Pro Curve Switch 4108GL. And um, the people I got this from kind of indicated that it wasn't working. I haven't really bothered to try and test it or troubleshoot it because I looked it up on eBay. You can buy one of these for practically nothing plus shipping. And it's so big and heavy, the shipping is pretty heavy duty. So uh, I'm just going to scrap it out because my workshop is just overflowing with equipment that needs to be scrapped out. And i gotta, I got to make some space. So I'm not even going to mess with this. I'm just going to take it apart and see what kind of goodies are in it and get rid of everything that's no good. So let's take a quick look around the unit before we start tearing it apart. So what do we got here? Well, got the usual console port up here. Looks like maybe a couple of optical ports here. Got uh, one, two, three, four, five modules installed. Each one with what? 20 ports? 24 ports on it. So, yeah, so that's what? Uh, uh, oof, that's a lot of ports. And each one, each port has uh, eight little gold pins in it. So. That's good. Plus, you know, the console port has some gold pins, too. So, we're getting some gold already. Haven't even got into the thing yet. So, let's do a little walk around here. It's got the, uh, it's got the mounting brackets to go into a rack, which is nice, because these are always nice, strong steel angle brackets, and I use these for all kinds of things. I use them for reinforcing corners on stuff I build around the farm. They come in really handy, so I'll salvage those and keep them. Let's see what else we got here. Around the back, nothing too interesting. Got a power supply there. Looks like it had an option for dual power supplies, but the second one's not installed. I get a lot of equipment like that, which could have dual power supplies, but usually there's only one installed. Okay. And, of course, this side's pretty much exactly the same as the other side. So, we got some heavy weather coming. This may get aborted by thunderstorms at any point. So I'm going to get started on it. Let me get the camera up on the tripod and get started taking it apart. And uh, we'll see what we've got inside. I've never been in one of these before, so I don't know. I'm hoping there's some good stuff on these modules and maybe a nice backplane with lots of gold pins. We shall see. The weather's coming in. So it's, it's kind of dark, so I hope you can actually see what I'm doing okay. So I'm going to start by taking the modules out. And we'll see what we got here. It looks like we got uh, five identical switch modules. And then this one here, probably some sort of supervisor. Global transceiver. Okay, global transceiver module. That's probably has the optical stuff on it. I'll bet the supervisor's built in. Let's as if I know what I'm talking about. I don't have any sort of networking certification. Well, okay. Nice little module. It's got the uh, optical transceiver module as a daughter board on it. I like, got a great big Broadcom BGA. That's going to have a lot of gold in it. Got gold band oscillator. Got are those those are like the biggest um, MLCC's I've ever seen right there they're huge I hope they're not magnetic oh there's two gold band oscillators there one was just dusty I couldn't see the gold on it got some gold pins and I'll bet each of these uh, sockets for these optical modules I'll bet each of these is full of gold pins too let me take this module out it's probably got gold fingers on it Oh yeah, look at that. Gold fingers, nice. Both sides. Tantalum capacitors. And I'll bet inside here, this looks like this might be die-cast zinc. It might be a little difficult to get apart. I'll bet there's some gold hiding in there. I may tear into that later. 
Let me get the rest of these modules out before it starts raining. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, also, we got gold pins on the back here. And they are, are they? Yes, they are pressed in. So that means they will come out fairly easily. That's nice. I like it when they're pressed in. Okay, let's have a look at one of these uh, Ethernet switch modules. 24 port Ethernet switch modules here. Okay, oh, all right, so we got another big Broadcom BGA, we got uh, another gold band oscillator, a lot of other chips, LEDs, light pipes, well, that'll, the light pipes will all go into plastic recycling, they've got some magnetics here under the light pipes, those will just uh, go in the garbage, ah, we got some more smaller Broadcom BGAs. I really like the Broadcom chips. They are always full of gold. They don't spare the gold at Broadcom. I like that about those people. We got a few more gold pins. We got gold pins along the back. Not really much on this side other than some, uh, some tantalum capacitors and some small MLCCs. So, got, uh, what, four more boards probably just like that one. I'll get them out. That screw's missing. Of course, I should, before I trash these modules, I mean, this whole unit isn't worth much, but I wonder if the modules are. I'll have to look them up. I'll look them up before I depopulate them, just to see. Since I doubt I'll get all the way through on this today, I'll try to remember to do that tonight. Look them up. Just see if they sell. Even if I got to sell, even though, know, you know, even if they're only going for a little bit, I can sell them as is and maybe get something out of them. We'll see. Otherwise, hey, I want all those Broadcom chips, gold pins, and uh, gold band oscillators. It's a surprising amount of gold in those gold band oscillators. Another one, exactly the same. And I'm sure we got two more here, exactly the same. Then we'll be able to get a look at the back plane and see what it looks like. Take these blank plates off down here too. Just get them out of the way. Oh, there we go. Yep. Another one. And the last one. Okay. And we got some blank plates here that need to come off. Steel by the looks of it. Okay. Never aluminum. Okay. Oh. All right. I'll have to take the camera off the tripod and give you a close-up look at the back plane. Because it is pretty. There's a lot of gold pins. I don't know what's showing up. Probably too dark in there. There are a lot of gold pins in these connectors. There's a lot of great big Broadcom chips in there. Well, three of them anyway. Well, one's a Motorola. But boy, I like those pins. They are big and chunky pins. And that's a big board too. I wonder if it's double-sided. Let me get the camera off the tripod and I'll give you a, a quick look inside at what I'm seeing. So here's what I'm seeing on one side. We've got lots of nice chunky gold pins in each of these three connectors. Actually, what? No, there's four connectors. My mistake. Couldn't see the fourth one down there. So we got lots of chunky gold pins and four connectors on both sides. The other half has them too. A uh, couple big Broadcom BGA chips, a lot of smaller chips, a whole lot of smaller chips over there. And I see another gold band oscillator over here on this side. Pretty much. More of the same pin-wise. We got, you know, four connectors with lots of gold pins in them. Looks like another connector up here for this this board that comes up to the front with all the status lights and the console port on it. Uh, oh, I see some more big old MLCCs over there. These things are monsters. All right, 
So, I'm going to have to start disassembling this thing in earnest to get this back plane board out because it is, well, there's no way to get it from this side. It's obviously going to have to come out from the back. And what else? We've got a bank of four fans, and I'll bet, I'll bet it's actually, no, I guess it's four because there's no vents on that side. So we got a bank of four fans over here. And I don't know if that's going to come out as a unit or in pieces. We'll see. So I'm going to have to uh, probably turn this thing around and start disassembling it from the back and or the top to try and get this back plane out. Before I start tearing it apart in earnest, for anybody who's interested, here's a label I found on the bottom of it. I wish I could find a date code on a lot of this stuff. It'd be interesting to know just how old it is. I mean, this was obviously must-have, cutting-edge, high-tech at one time, you know. And now, nobody wants it. It'd be nice to know how many years have passed between those two states of affairs. But I don't see a date code on it anywhere. Unless it's in one of those languages over there that I don't read. Or somehow encoded in some of these numbers without being obvious. Okay, I'm thinking my best move here is probably to uh, get this power supply out, get it out of the way. Maybe take off this blank power supply plate over here and then maybe look at getting the lid off the top and then that'll give me some idea what I'm going to have to do to get the, uh, the back plane and that uh, last daughter card out of there. That's my theory anyway. We'll see if it pans out. Ugh. Power supply. I should look this up. It's probably easy enough to test whether it works or not. I should look this up and see if they resell. No gold pins. I was hoping for gold pins there. Oh wow. I'll set that aside for now. No gold. Yeah, no gold pins on the other side either. Okay. Ah, oh, well. Every once in a while I'll take apart a piece of equipment that has big, chunky gold pins on the power connectors. Love those when I get them. More scrap steel. Okay. Oh, isn't that nice? I'm going to have to get my funky bits out. These are Torx. I was thinking they were Phillips. So I'm about to get Torx bits out. Back. Second. Okay, here we go with the Torx bit. This may just be another plate. This is just... No, oh, what's holding that on? Well, there's a line of Phillips screws over here. I'm switching back and forth between... No, those are Torx, too. I swear they look like Phillips. Take these out. Aha! Okay. More scrap steel. Ah, the whole fan trait looks like comes out. Nice. Look at that. Well, that was easy. Let's see, 24 volt DC. I don't really have a use for 24 volt DC fans. So I do think they're going to go into recycling along with the steel. Oh, well. But that's nice. They came out nice and easy. Now it looks like there's just, uh, yeah, this back plane might come out fairly easy. It looks like it's got uh, about nine uh, torque screws holding it in. Let me see if I can get it out. Of course, can I get my screw gun into some of these torque screws? Maybe not. I might have to uh, 
get the uh, screwdriver handle out and do it the hard way on a couple of them. It's weird. I can use any tool with either hand. I am totally ambidextrous, right or left handed, with any tool you can name. Except a pencil or pen. I can't write with my left hand to save my life. But uh, any other tool. Either way. Ah, I did get that one. I didn't think I'd be able to get the screw gun into there. Is that everything holding it on? So it should. We have to twist it around to get it out. And there it is. There's the back plane. Nice. Not much on the back, just some MLCCs. Some of them pretty chunky looking. There's one chip here. I'm not sure what that thing there is. E512. I wonder what an E is. There's a big chunky MLCC. I tell you what, this equipment has some big ones on it. Here's a couple more over here. Big MLCCs. And lots of nice big gold chunky pins. And are they? Yes, they are pressed in too. So, with a little elbow grease, I ought to just be able to pull those right out, in theory, anyway. Okay, that's good. Set this aside. So, all that's left in here, I don't know if it's showing up, is the daughter card that holds the uh, console connector and the status lights on the front end. And how does that come out? Oh, I see. I probably need to take these little standoff screws off on the console port and then I bet that will probably slide right out. I just bet you. Yep. Once you disassemble enough machines you start to get a feel for how they're put together. Okay, this board. Well, it's got a lot of LEDs on it, a couple of switches, console port, and it's got some some gold uh, fingers over here. And it looks like some gold pads over here. Never had anything. Oh, debug LEDs. Aha. Uh -huh. But uh, they didn't install those because I guess this board didn't need any debugging. All right, yeah, and there's something else up here. Max speed LED, also not installed. So that must be a, a feature that's available on a different model, but uses the same daughter board, I would imagine. All right, so not much here, but uh, a little something. Let's see, there's absolutely nothing else in here I want. It's all steel. The only other thing I want from here are these mounting gears. And for that I gotta put my Phillips screwdriver back in. Get these mounting gears. Well pick those up off the ground. Those I will keep I don't know, am I in frame? i to try and stay in frame. Don't have the budget to hire a cameraman. Cameraman, sound man, editor, jack of all trades, master of none, that's me. And, you know what, there is something else in there. There's a little tiny board in there. I don't know how to get to it. I don't know if there's anything good on it, but it's got a couple of LEDs on it. One for power and one for fault. I can see... Oh, you know what? No, those are just basils. So the LEDs were on this thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, the LEDs were on this. And they just shine through that... the basils in there. So that's it! Alright, so... This is all just scrap steel. 
Gonna go in my recycling. Damn, it's dirty. Wow. This scrapping stuff will get you dirty. All this is scrap steel. Yeah, and this is kind of like white collar scrap too. This isn't even the really dirty stuff. And I'm still getting filthy. All right, so I need to The weather's coming in, so this is probably all we're going to get done today. Um, overnight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up these different boards, the modules, the backplane board. I'm going to look up the power supply, too. And where's the other board? Sort of the optical, the optical interface board. See if they resell. If not, I'll come back to scrapping them out. Probably tomorrow, after all the rain and thunderstorms come through. Um, and whatever I decide is worthless, I will uh, depopulate, take all the good stuff off. All right, so see you probably tomorrow afternoon. All right, so it's a new day. The rains came through yesterday and really gave us uh, a good washing, but uh, now it's going to be nice for the next few days, so I can work on this stuff some more. Well, I've had a chance to look this stuff up online and see if any of it is selling and for what for. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of all of these listed online. And some of them for really outrageous prices. I thought I hit the mother load when I looked up to see what this back plane is selling for. Quite a bit of money. Um... Some of these modules they're asking a lot of money for. But I'll tell you what, asking is one thing, sales is something else. As far as I can tell, absolutely nothing is selling. So, you know, with a couple of exceptions. You know what the most valuable piece right here is? Power supply. There's actually sales for about 30 bucks for this. I may hold on to this, test it out, see if it works list it, see if I can sell it. I don't like holding on to a lot of uh, inventory if it doesn't sell reasonably quickly. I'll have to scrap it out because I just don't have the room to hold a lot of inventory. The only other item here that's actually selling is this little optical transceiver module. These go for 10 bucks. So, alright, so this is not a case of where the, uh, the parts are worth more than the whole. I was hoping we had that kind of situation going on. But apparently nobody really wants the parts very much. And I think I figured out why. Because it took me a while. But I found, finally, I don't know if that's showing up. Let me refocus on it. There's a date code there. Come on, focus. You can do it. June of 01. This thing it's just a few months short of 20 years old. Okay, that's why nobody's interested in it. Um, they've all probably been taken out of service and replaced for the most part. The few of them that are in service still, well, there's lots of parts available online if you want to pay those kind of prices, but I guess there's not enough people either willing to pay or maybe these things are uber reliable and don't break down, but uh, nobody's buying. So with the exception of these, for now, everything else is getting scrapped out. And uh, we'll see how much gold I can get out of them. I'm, I'm really liking the looks of the gold pins on this backplane board. Plus there's some nice big BGAs on there. So, okay. So, let me get set up to uh, take this stuff apart. And then it can go in the kiln and get depopulated. And we'll sort it out and see what we got. Okay, let's get this disassembly show on the road. Since I'm not keeping any of this stuff, I'm just going to scrap it out for the gold-bearing parts. And before I get started with the modules, I almost threw the fan, uh, the fan tray in the recycling. But I'm glad I took a close look at it before I did. There's some nice, chunky, gold-plated pins in this connector. So I'm keeping this. I checked the individual fan connectors. There is no gold plating in them, so the rest of this can go into recycling. 
but I am keeping that. All right, nice. More gold pins. Now, <clears throat> let's see here. I've got a uh, 24 port Ethernet card here. I've got this uh, little daughter card that was up on top that has all the status LEDs and the uh, console connector on it. It's got some nice gold fingers up here. So I'll, I'll harvest that. Uh, I've got one of these uh, optical port boards. Um, I'll take this apart, get all the good stuff off of it. And we got the uh, backplane board with its nice, lots of nice big chunky gold pins and big BGA chips. All right. Well, I guess I'll start with this because there's really not much to do on it. Um, I'm going to get these. Uh, fingers over here. I'm just gonna take them off like that. Set them aside. I'll start a little pile over here for stuff that I'm keeping. And um, there's really not much else on this board. I want this console connector because it's got the nice gold, chunky gold pins in it. And it's got a whole line of LEDs here. And LEDs all have a little bit of gold in them. So when I depopulate these boards in the kiln, I'll throw this one in and we'll see if we can get all these components off. So I can process them too. But for now, this board's done. Now I have six of these 24 port boards. So I'm only going to take one apart, just so you don't have to watch me do all six of them. I know some of you would just love to see me do all six of them, but you know, just just replay this part of the, the video six times and you'll get the gist of it. Alright, so we got a lot of uh, optical light pipes here. So there's a lot of LEDs down here, one for each port. Actually, yeah, one for each port, it looks like. So i got to figure out how to get these light pipes out. They should just pop. Yeah, they just pop right out. There we go. And that's just plastic for the recycling. It's like acrylic or something. I can't really think of another use for it. Okay, so light pipes off. So there's all the LEDs that fed it, two lines of them. So what do we got on this board that I want? Well, I want all the IC chips, of course. These are not IC chips. These are um, magnetics. They've got little transformers in them for the uh, RJ45 connectors over here. But uh, there's some nice stuff here. There's a great big Broadcom BGA chip. There's a one, two, three little Broadcom BGA chips. There's a lot of smaller IC chips. There's some gold pins here. And there's a lot of gold pins back here. I want all this stuff. So most of this stuff should come off in the kiln without too much trouble. It's almost all surface mount. You know, I, I, I depopulate my boards in the kiln. I put it in the kiln increase the temperature slowly up until it's above the um, temperature of solder melting and then you know shake the boards and everything just falls right off it's it's a really great easy way to depopulate circuit boards so let me take this uh, steel plate off I don't need it looks like it's just two screws holding that steel plate on the front yep all right so with that off of there once uh, the kiln gets up to temperature, all these um, RJ45 modules should pull right off the board. Let's see, what else? I want to take uh, the gold pins in this connector here off before I put the board in the kiln because the plastic that's surrounding the pins is likely, likely to melt and entomb them in there and make it hard to uh, process them. Now these pins yeah, are pressed in. So they should come out of the board fairly easily. Of course, I've said that before and then struggled with it mightily. So we'll see how it goes this time. Hey, look at that! Came right out. All right, so with a little effort, I should be able to get this apart and recover all of the gold pins within. And I hope I'm doing this in frame. I'm famous for drifting out of frame. There they are. Look at all those gold pins there. Wow. And I drift. A few went flying too, so. Nice. Put that over in my gold pile. So, really, 
that's all I want to take off this board at this stage. The kiln will take the rest of it off. Everything else on this board will come right off once the kiln gets above the temperature of a uh, solder melting. So we'll set this board aside and just pretend I did this five more times for the rest of those boards over there. Then we've got this optical board here. So, or what do they call it? Uh, Gigabit Transceiver GL Module. Alright, so, let's see. Let me get this steel plate off the front of it, too. It looks like this one has four screws holding it on. Yep, alright, there we go. So, not that much different. It's got uh, a lot fewer chips and no magnetics, but otherwise very similar. Now, these sockets here, I would bet, have gold pins in them. I would just bet you. And they will probably melt in the kiln. So I want to see if I can get the plastic off of here. Ooh, that is good plastic, guys. There we go. When in doubt, resort to extreme violence. Who said that? Was that Vivian on the Young Ones? I don't know. That's that's going back a ways. A lot of you younger folks watching this have no idea who I'm talking about, I'm sure. All right. So there's... There's the connectors. I got some of the plastic off. I think we might just have to risk it with these, because I don't see a good way to get these out. There's about, I don't know, 50 pins there at least, soldered in, through hole. So it's going to be hard to get those off. I guess we'll have to risk it with this, and just put it in the kiln and see if I can get these to fall off without melting and covering all the lovely gold pins inside that I can just barely see they're there. Okay, got some more gold pins here, gold pins here, but they should come out. Gold band oscillators. Let me get these uh, gold pins off the end here. Ooh, chunk of board came with them. Okay. There we go. More lovely gold pins. I do love my gold pins. Gold pins and have some gold plating on that too. I will throw that in the in the thing. But gold pins and gold fingers. I like to call them the low hanging fruit of a uh, e-scrap gold recovery. All right, so I would say this is ready to go in the kiln. We'll see how these connectors survive it. All right. Next, let's tackle this backplane board. There's a lot of good stuff on here I want. You know, I want these big BGA chips. I want these big chunky gold pins. And they are just pressed in, so they should come out just as easy, I'm hoping, as the others did. Uh, looks like the weather's coming in again. Hopefully I can get this done before it starts raining. Let's give it a try and see if I can get some of these out. This might be a little trickier than the others. Pull that off. Okay. Pull this part off first, then maybe I can pull those pins out. The little guide. I'm not sure what kind of plastic this is. It looks like it's got a lot of some kind of fiber in it. This stuff might actually survive the kiln pretty well. I don't know. 
but I'm not going to risk it. All right, let me see if I can get some of these pins out. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it this way. Now, well, I'm breaking them off, but that's that's one way to get them out, right? I can see they're not gonna not gonna come easily. Huh. They're definitely not gonna not gonna come quietly and easily. They're only pressed in, but my goodness, are they pressed in. They don't want to come out. Here we go. Maybe. Huh. <laughs> well, I got the big chunky ones that are for the interconnection, but I left a lot of the little ones that are in the board in there. I might just have to go through and pull all these out one or two at a time with my needle nose pliers. That's going to be a little bit tedious, but it's better than trying to pick them out of all the debris in the bottom of the kiln. So I think I will probably do that. So you don't have to watch this whole process. I'll just go ahead and do it off camera. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got this connector, this edge card connector here, which the daughter board slid into. Now that's got gold pins in it too, and it's made out of plastic, so it's liable to melt. Let me see if I can just bust it off. Oh, nope. All the pins stayed behind. But what I can do is just go along with my diagonal cutters and cut them and drop them into this bowl here. So that's probably what I will do. Again, so I don't have to sort them out of the debris in the bottom of the kiln after I get all the other stuff. I already have all the gold pins. So, okay, I will work on that off camera, getting all these gold pins out, and then um, the boards will be ready to go in the kiln. I'll show you what we get out of the kiln, and we'll sort out the good stuff and the bad stuff and see what all we got in the end. We'll tally it up. I'll be back. All right, all these boards have everything off of them that I want to take off. Got a lot of gold in this pan here, a lot of gold. Uh, getting the uh, pins out of this board was a little bit tedious, but once you get the hang of it, you know, it goes pretty quick. I think it took me like five minutes to get them all out. It's worth it. There's a lot of gold pins there. The hardest part was pulling them out with my needle nose pliers without having them go flying everywhere. I'm sure if you made it off the workbench here onto the ground. But I got most of them. And I'll tell you what, these big chunky ones here in these connectors... The, the little skinny ones stayed in the board, but these big chunky ones stayed in the plastic connectors. They come right out. It just takes a minute or two to sit here and do it. And hey presto, more gold pins cleaned up. Someday I'll have to do a video on recovering gold from pins. There's a right way, there's a wrong way. Believe me, I've done it the wrong way a few times. Okay, so basically, um, this stuff's all ready for the kiln. Actually, I say that, but I think I'm going to take these power connectors off the back of the uh, back plane. Not because there's gold pins in them and I'm concerned about them. It's just this plastic here has the look of something that's going to melt around the temperature of solder and uh, run down the board or gunk up my kiln, which I've gone to great lengths lately to clean up. So... I think I'll just rip these off with uh, some uh, channel lock pliers. Then we'll put it in the kiln. All right. I'll be back. All right, the boards have been depopulated. I hope you can hear me over the wind. It's actually been a few days. We've had a series of bad storms come through, and I managed to get the boards in the kiln and depopulated between storms, but there's another one coming. So I kind of got to rush through this. But here's all the stuff. 
We got off the boards. Here's the junk. This is mostly the magnetics, transformers, coils, whatnot. Basically inductors for the most part. Useless to me, that'll go in the garbage. Alright, here's a big pile of IC chips. Everything from pretty huge flat packs down to uh, tiny, tiny little things. But that's a, that's a big pile of IC chips. I'm happy about that. So I've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good technique going for getting gold out of IC chips. I'm always looking for more feedstock. Because most of these chips have gold bond wires in them. Uh, over here, LEDs. Uh, a few uh, through hole ones, but a whole bunch of surface mount LEDs. Each one of those uh, switch modules had a whole bunch of surface mount LEDs in it, and I had, what, five switch modules? So there's a whole bunch of surface mount LEDs there. But each LED has a little whisker of gold in it, so that's a beautiful thing. Up here, we've got the Broadcom BGA chips. We've got these big ones up here. Now these are what I call metal top. I don't know what the exact de designation or name for these is. I call them metal top because they have a sheet of copper on the top. But on the back there's green fiber and, uh, and a black blob of epoxy. And what you can do is you can get a knife blade in there and you can peel that green fiber and black blob of epoxy away from the copper. And then it's pretty much just like a gold corner BGA. Lots of gold in there. These are beautiful things. This one's actually a Motorola, not a Broadcom, but same thing pretty much. Then we've got these little Broadcom chips. These, these are all epoxy and fiber, so you don't have to do anything other than, you know, you can treat these just like um, Gold Corner BGA chips. And I'll put a link to how I uh, treat Gold Corner BGA chips up here in the corner. So I got a lot of BGAs. That's nice. That makes me happy. There's a lot of gold there in those chips. Uh, got the uh, other miscellaneous semiconductors that were on the board, transistors and uh, voltage regulators and drivers and whatnot. There's a little bit of gold in those too. A whole big pile of tantalum capacitors. Add those to my collection. Okay, up here we've got the uh, the 12 gang RJ45 connectors. These all came right off the board. Each one of these has eight gold-plated uh, pins in it. What I will probably do with these and this other gold-plated connectors, these connectors came right off the board. They survived the, being in the kiln. That's nice, but they've got gold inside them. And the console port had gold inside it. What I will probably do with all these connectors is I will run them through the Eco Goldex gold stripping solution just to take the gold off of them. That's probably the easiest way there is to get that gold plating off these things. Got a pile of uh, gold plated pins over here that came off the boards. A uh, whole bunch. What have I got? About seven gold band oscillators down here. That's nice. I think there was one on each uh, daughter card and one on the uh, back plane board. So, and, and there's a lot of gold in these gold band oscillators. That's nice. And then I've got some other oscillators, not the gold band kind, but I will add them to my collection, my oscillator jar. It's getting full. Uh, let's see, what else? Ah, MLCCs. Now, there were four large ones in there. I mean, these are like the biggest MLCCs I've ever seen. They're easily like a third of an inch on a side. They're huge, and they're heavy. Heavy as all get out. And... Miracle of miracles, they are non-magnetic! Yay! So I guess these are the kind that have a lot of palladium in them. Now there are a lot of other MLCCs, smaller ones, on those boards. But I'll tell you what, they're all magnetic. And this is just a representative sample because over here in the catch basin that was at the bottom of the kiln, there's probably another hundred that I haven't sorted out yet from the debris there. There's probably another hundred of these. So, what I will probably do, since they're fairly large, they're not the tiny little grain of sand size, I can actually sort these out in just a few minutes, probably out of the debris. I will keep these in my uh, magnetic jar, because apparently there is some silver in them, even though there aren't precious metals like palladium in them. 
So these will go in the non-magnetic jar, these will go in the magnetic jar. Oh, and I almost forgot about this whole Ziploc bag full of uh, gold pins and fingers that I uh, pulled off of the boards before they went in the kiln. So there's a lot more gold-plated stuff here, too. All right, so not a bad little haul. Uh, that unit actually has a lot of good stuff in it. There's a lot of IC chips here. There's a lot of BGAs. There's a lot of LEDs. You know, just in these these four piles right here, there's a fair amount of gold. Plus, I got all the gold-plated parts up here. So, we're doing pretty good. That was, that was a good little unit. That was definitely well worth scrapping out. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, or just killed a little time, whatever. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Subscribe to see future videos and press the little bell icon so you'll be informed when they come out. There's going to be more coming. I've got a bunch more stuff in my workshop that needs to be scrapped out. Boy, have I got a lot of stuff that needs to be scrapped out. I'm going to have to start another video tomorrow if it's not pouring down rain. So anyway, thanks for watching. Keep it safe out there. Have a good one. Bye.